with the Andrew Fugachi. This is a node, this is called iSwipe, dual free, text entry using gate paths. Thank you for the intro introduction. Uh, so I guess I was lucky with this computer thing. Um, okay. So people with quadriplegia must find alternatives to the keyboard to enter text in the computer. Uh, if the person has motor control of her eyes, she can use an eye gaze tracker to type on a virtual keyboard with her eye movements. One of the most common methods for eye typing is dwell time. To type a word with dwell time, the user has to fixate the desired key with her eyes for a given time to select it. The dwell time typically varies between 400 milliseconds and one second. So our question is, would it be possible to remove this wait time? Can we apply the same principles of, for example, shape or swipe-based methods available for touch screens on text entry by geese? To type a word with a shape-based method, the user initially touches the first letter with her finger and moves it through the other letters. When she releases her finger, the word is typed. So the shape defined by the user's touch determines the typed word. So do we have to change anything in this to use this idea for our text entry by gaze? And the first thing to consider is that the user's touch on the screen defines a shape with clear start and end positions. Unlike hands, the user's gaze is continuously on the virtual keyboard, so the start of a swipe may not be clear. Also, when typing with our hands, we can look at the text at the same time. And when typing with our eyes, we cannot do the same, because if I want to check the typed text, I have to stop typing, look at the typed text, and then resume the typing task. <clears throat> Considering these challenges, we propose iSwipe. So the first challenge is how to determine when the user started and stopped swiping a word. And instead of having to guess when these events occur, iSwipe requires the user to explicitly select the first and last letters of the word using reverse crossing. So to select a key with reverse crossing, the user must initially look at it. And shortly after that, an action button will pop up showing the available options. For example, start swiping. To select an option, the user must look at it and then look back at the key. Now let's see an example of the user typing the word gaze with eye swipe. The user initially selects the first letter G by reverse crossing. Then she glances through the vicinity of the middle letters A and Z. And as eye swipe uses the shape of the words, the user doesn't have to accurately reach the middle letters. Finally, she selects the last letter E by reverse crossing. And uh, note that the, the word to be typed is shown in the action button, so the user doesn't have to move her gaze away from the keyboard to verify it. When the user finishes the reverse crossing, the word is typed. If, however, the wrong word was selected by uh, I swipe, she can choose another word on the top of the interface. For example, she can select the word grade instead by reverse crossing. The keyboard can be easily extended by showing action buttons in multiple directions. So for example, four punctuation marks can be typed by the same key. So how does iSwipe determine the typed word? iSwipe has a dictionary from which we select only the words starting and ending with the letters indicated by the user, which in our case are G and E. For example, the word give. iSwipe then computes the word's ideal path which is the tra trajectory connecting the center of the keys that form the word. And it does the same for all selected words. Each ideal, ideal path is then compared to the user's gaze path with dynamic time warping, or DTW, which is a technique for comparison of temporal sequences. Uh, the candidates are then sorted according to their DTW score and word prob probability from a language model and the top five are displayed by the interface. Okay, so we performed an experiment to compare iSwipe to a dwell time keyboard in terms of performance and user experience. 10 university students typed phrases presented randomly using both iSwipe and a 600 milliseconds dwell time keyboard. 
each participant came twice to the lab and performed two 10-minute sessions with each method in each day. Now to the results. The graph on the left shows the average typing rate in words per minute for each session and method. And a significant learning effect was observed for both methods, and the average typing rate in the last session was significantly higher using iSwipe. The graph on the right shows the error rate as measured by the minimum string distance rate. And the low, uh, low values indicate that the participants were careful typing with both interfaces. With iSwipe, the user has to reverse cross the first and last letters of the word and only glance at the vicinity of the middle letters. For this reason, we expected longer words to, be, to, to have a higher text entry rate in characters per minute. So in this graph, we show the mean and standard deviation for the typing rates for each word length from 1 to 12. And the dashed line shows the average typed word length in the experiment. The entry rates for dwell time were expected to be approximately constant for all word lengths uh, because each key has to be typed individually. Also, at the end of the experiment, we asked participants to rate their perception of learnability, accuracy, speed, and comfort from one for the worst to seven for the best. And this rater shows the average ratings for all participants. Um, these results are also consistent with observations made by some participants that said that even though iSwipe was harder to learn, it got, got faster with practice. Okay, so to wrap up, iSwipe uses reverse crossing to explicitly select the first and last letters of the word, and it not only increases the prediction accuracy, but also facilitates extending the keyboard. Uh, as in the punctuation key example. The use of shape allows the user to only glance at the vicinity of the middle letters without having to actually reach them. And regarding feedback, the word to be typed is displayed on a pop-up right above the key, so the user doesn't, ha doesn't have to move her gaze away from the keyboard to verify it. In the experiment, participants achieved an average typing rate of 11.7 words per minute after 30 minutes typing with iSwipe. And considering the learning effects, we expect that higher rates are expected. Uh, thank you. And while I take questions, I just wanted to play the a short video. Did you compare um, uh, uh, eye gesture typing with dwell time for the first and last letter rather than using the uh, the first crossing? Or do you what? have recordings of the what percentage of the time were actually spent on the reverse recording part of? We we do have, and on average, users took about six hundred milliseconds for for one reverse crossing. And uh, in a pilot study, we also considered using the dwell time instead of reverse crossing to select the first and last. Okay. But what happened is that when the user had, did a misselection, so I, for example, I accidentally selected E as the first letter, uh, it was hard for, for him to realize that, oh, I, I did that, and then the next dwell time is to finish this word and not to start, like to restart another word. Okay. Thank you. Uh, so thanks for this cool idea. My question is about um, if I am to search for the next letter, where is it located on the keyboard? I'll probably look at many letters and fixate my eyes on them. So how do you distinguish if I am like intending this current letter or I'm still searching for the letter on the keyboard? Oh, so actually, if if you're typing a word and then you're looking for letters, it will probably not work. Okay. So. That, that's why you have to activate the first letter. And then, so pretty much we assume that you know approximately the locations of the keys on the QWERTY keyboard. And then when, when you know like where, where are the letters in the word you want to type, then you start typing it. Okay, 